How's it going everyone? It is Panjano here and today I'm going to be bringing you guys the ultimate FPS increase guide for Cyberpunk 2077. This video is going to be helping you guys achieve the very best gameplay experience possible by increasing FPS, reducing your input latency and helping you smooth out and fix any stuttering issues you might be experiencing. If you guys are happy with your results and do enjoy the video, please do leave a like as it does help me out tremendously. Alongside let me know of your results, questions, queries, tips or tweaks you might have in that comment section down below. And if you guys do enjoy this sort of content and wish to stay up to date with the channel, please do consider pressing that subscription button along Inside the bell notification to be notified instantly whenever new content goes live on the channel. To kick things off, we're first of all going to be ensuring that we're running on the latest Windows 10 update, as Windows 10 version 20H2 is actually one of the best Windows 10 builds in around about the last two years or so for gaming and performance. This is completely free and easy to obtain, you will not lose any of your files. To see if there is an update available for you and to obtain the update, simply navigate inside of the description down below to the Windows 10 update tool. Navigate down to the update now button, click this once, the Windows 10 upgrade tool will then be downloaded. If you are running on the latest version of Windows 10, you'll be given the thank you for updating to the latest version prompt found here. But if there is a brand new version of Windows 10 available for you, follow all of the on-screen prompts to upgrade this current PC, and you'll be up and running on the latest update to Windows 10 in no time. So jumping into the basic optimizations in which we can start applying. First of all, navigate down to the bottom left hand side, click on the Windows button, and type in Game Space Mode. Click on Game Mode Settings, and ensure that the Game Mode is actually switched to the On position. Navigate back down to the left hand side once again, this time typing in GPU Space Settings. Go up to the graphics settings tab found with inside of here. You may have the option for hardware accelerated GPU scheduling found up here. If this option is available to you, make sure that you go ahead and turn this on. We're also going to be navigating down to the graphics performance preference tab. With inside of here, we're going to simply go ahead and press browse. We're then going to navigate into the installation directory of Cyberpunk. So for me, that's going to be inside of Steam, Steam Apps, Common, Cyberpunk 2077. Regardless of which version you have, go inside of the bin folder, go inside of x64, navigate down to cyberpunk2077.exe, then click add. Once that's been added, navigate down to Cyberpunk 2077, navigate down to the options menu and ensure that high performance at the bottom has been selected. Then press save and we can then go and exit out of that tab. We can then apply some quick optimizations to the game itself. For this, we're going to be navigating inside of the launcher where we have the game installed. You should then be able to right click on the game, navigate down to your properties tab. It's recommended to have enable Steam overlay while in game unchecked, use desktop game theater whilst in Steam VR unchecked. I'd recommend keeping Steam Cloud enabled. Navigating over to the updates tab, I'd recommend going down to the background downloads tab with inside of here and actually turning this to pause background downloads whilst you're playing. If you are not using a controller to play the game and you're just simply using the mouse and keyboard and you do not plan on using a controller for the game, I'd recommend coming into this drop down menu and disabling the Steam input. But if you do use a controller, leave this at default. We can then never get over to the local files tab, go to browse local files with inside of here. Going to be going back inside of the in folder x64 navigating down to the cyberpunk 2077 exe right clicking navigating down to properties navigate over to the compatibility tab ensure that you disable the full screen optimizations navigate down to change our dpi and override high DPI scaling behavior. Select OK, apply, and OK. Now jumping into another quick yet highly effective optimization for Windows itself. For this, we're going to be navigating to the bottom left hand side, clicking on the Windows button, typing in power space plan. With inside of here, navigate inside of edit power plan. Navigate up to the navigation bar found up here in the top to power options. Once inside of here, navigate down to show additional plans. With inside of here, we're then going to be selecting the power plan which works best for our system specs, depending on whether we're running on an Intel based system or an AMD Ryzen based system. For those of you running on an Intel based system, it's recommended to navigate down to the Windows default high performance profile found here. To then simply select the profile, click the button next to it. Once it's selected, you're then good to go. For those of you running on an AMD Ryzen based system, it's recommended to go with an AMD specific power plan. I'm going to be going with AMD Ryzen high performance. If your PC does not support this and you don't see high performance, go with AMD Ryzen balanced. Once you've selected the power plan for your system, we can then go ahead and exit out. This now leads us on to the GPU or graphics card specific optimizations. To start off with, first of all, going to be updating our graphics card drivers. This is incredibly important and essential to be getting the best performance possible, as both Nvidia and AMD have dropped day one GPU drivers specifically for cyberpunk performance. To update your GPU drivers, it's incredibly simple, easy, and completely free to do. For this, simply navigate down to your task bar, right click, open up task manager. With inside of here, simply navigate up to the performance tab found up here in the top, then scroll all the way down to the bottom to GPU. In the top right hand side, you'll then see the graphics card in which you're using on your system. With that information, you then want to navigate inside of the description down below and click on the corresponding link for either NVIDIA GeForce users or AMD Radeon users. For those of you running on an NVIDIA graphics card, simply navigate down to the automatic driver updates utility found here, select download now. Open up the program once it's finished downloading, this will get you up and running on the latest GPU driver for your system. For those of you running on AMD Radeon graphics cards, it's a very similar process. 
You'll be brought to this web page found here, go down to the auto detect and install updates, click download now. Once the tool is finished downloading, open it up. Once again, this will download and install the latest graphics card driver for your system. Once you've updated your graphics card drivers, it's then essential to ensure that you're running on the correct settings for those drivers to ensure that you're getting the best performance possible. So to do this, we're going to be simply right clicking on our desktop and opening up the Nvidia control panel or AMD Radeon panel. For Nvidia users, simply navigate to the top left hand side to adjust image settings with preview. Navigate down to the middle option titled use advanced 3D image settings. Once that's been selected, go to the bottom right and press apply. Once that's been applied, navigate over to manage 3D settings in the top left hand side. What I now want you to go ahead and do is simply pause the video, copy all of the settings shown on screen found here. Once you've copied all of these settings, I'm going to proceed to scroll down further, pause the video once again. Your OpenGL rendering GPU will have to be set to your specific graphics card. Once again, pause the video, copy all of the settings shown and repeat that step until every single option with inside of here is closely matched. We can then navigate up to configure surround and physics. Navigate over to the physics settings, go into the drop down menu and select your GPU with inside of here again. For those of you running on an AMD Radeon graphics card, it's a very similar process. You'll You'll simply right click on your desktop, open up inside of the AMD Radeon control panel settings. You'll then navigate over to the global display tab. With inside of here, once again, you'll simply pause the video, copy all of the settings shown on screen with inside of here, and continue to repeat that step until you've closely matched every single setting with inside of your control panel to the control panel shown on screen now. Before we actually go ahead and boot into the game to finalize our in-game settings, I'm going to recommend you an optional optimization, which is highly recommended. This comes in the form of the Intelligent Standby List Cleaner Tool, or ISLC. I recommend this in every single one of my FPS increase guides, as it's a fantastic free and easy to use two-in-one optimization tool. The first part of the program comes in the form of the timer resolution app. This will help you reduce input latency between the game, operating system and the hardware you have installed. The second part of the program is the standby list cleaner. This will help you clean up a reserved pool of RAM in the background so you don't run into any RAM bottlenecks alongside closing out of all your standby list which can drastically help reducing any micro stuttering you could be experiencing. If you do wish to go ahead with this optimization, navigate into the description down below, find the ISLC or intelligent standby list cleaner link. With inside of simply scroll down to the official download here button. Once the program is downloaded, go ahead and open this up. I'm then going to choose to extract this to my desktop and after a few short moments, you'll then be met with a folder on your desktop. Double click on the folder, go inside of the Intelligent Standby List Cleaner application by double clicking. For the first box, set this to 1024. The second box needs to be set to half of your system memory. You can see your memory found up here in the top left hand side. For me, that's 32,000. So half of that is going to be about 16,000 like so. We can then navigate over to the right hand side to wanted time resolution. We're then going to be inputting the value of zero 0.50. Use the delete key to remove everything else with inside of there. In the bottom right hand side, ISLC polling rate, we're going to be setting this to 500 for high end PCs and medium end PCs and below, set this to 1000. We can then check the box for custom timer resolution, go to the bottom right hand side, click on start. We're going to go ahead and click on purge standby list. That's going to clean up my standby list in the background and it will automatically be doing this all of the time whilst we're playing the game. So we can then go ahead and minimize out of the program and leave that running in the background. Now for any of you that are running on an AMD Ryzen based system, there is a quick fix in which we're going to apply to the game application itself, which will allow the game to have access to all cores and threads on your CPU. For those of you running on Intel based systems, you will not have to apply this fix as you'll see no difference from this whatsoever. To apply this fix, we simply need to change one line of code in the game's application. This is incredibly easy, safe and simple to do. To do this, you'll need to use a hex editing tool. You can Google around or just simply use the link in the description down below for the hex editing tool I'm going to be using in this video. But if you are using the link in the description down below, simply scroll down to the download page found here, navigate over to the language for the version you're going to be downloading and click on the download button. Once the program is finished downloading, simply open it up, navigate over to the setup and double click. Go ahead and install the program to your PC. We can then choose to launch the hex editor and then press finish. All we now need to simply go ahead and do is navigate inside of the installation folder for Cyberpunk. Once inside of the main installation folder, navigate inside of bin x64, then navigate down to the Cyberpunk 2077 exe. Before we do anything, we're quickly going to be making a backup of the application. For this, I'm simply going to go ahead and right click, select copy, go to my desktop and and select paste. With the backup created, what we can then go ahead and do is open up the hex editing tool and drag in the game application from our game folder, just like so. What we now need to go ahead and do is to navigate up to the top to search go down to find, go over to hex values. With inside of here, we're simply going to be searching for 75 space 30 space 33 space C9 space B8 space 01. Once you've got that typed out with all of the spaces included, go ahead and press search all. Once you find this line of code, what we simply need to go ahead and do is navigate over to where it says 75. And we're going to be changing this value to E, B, 
just like so. Once that's been changed to EB, navigate up to the save button, save that, exit out, and we're then good to go. All we now need to go ahead and do is to simply boot into the game and load up one of our last saves so we can edit our in-game options in real time. Once you've booted the game, it's quickly recommended to go ahead and press Alt and Tab to navigate back onto the desktop with the game running in the background. At this point, it's recommended to navigate down to your task bar, right click, and open up task manager. With inside of it, it's recommended to navigate over to the processes tab. With inside of here, click on where it says CPU. With inside of Cyberpunk, navigate over to the arrow next to it go to the drop down menu. With inside of it, right click on Cyberpunk 2077, then click on go to details. Right click on the Cyberpunk 2077 EXE once again, then go to set priority and set this to high. Once that's done, we can then go ahead and simply minimize out the task manager and navigate back with inside of the game. Once you've booted into the game, simply then go ahead and press the escape button and navigate over to the settings menu. We're first of all going to be starting off with the video tab within side of here. VSync is definitely recommended if you are either using FreeSync or G-Sync. Just make sure that you set VSync to your monitor maximum refresh rate. Navigating down to windowed mode, set this to full screen for everyone, then navigating down to resolution. Unless you're running on an extremely low end PC, this is recommended to have set to your monitor's maximum resolution. We can then navigate up to the graphics tab. In the top right hand side of the screen now you'll be seeing what settings preset I'm showing off. You'll see my recommended settings, my low end settings and my medium end settings, so just simply go ahead and follow all of the settings shown on screen now for your desired preset. These are going to be my recommended settings, so simply pause the video, copy all of the settings shown. As we proceed to scroll down, continue to pause the video until all of your settings match all of the settings which are shown inside of the recommended preset. But we are going to be using NVIDIA DLSS if the option is available to you. If the option is available, I'd recommend going with balanced. If you are seeking further FPS gains though, try out performance. These will be the settings which will be getting you the best visual fidelity, helping the game look a lot sharper, crisper, and in my opinion, a lot better. Moving on to medium end settings. So again, we'll simply go through all of the in-game settings, pause the video, copy all of the settings shown, and continue to repeat that or as closely matched as possible. And last but not least, for those of you running on ultra low end systems and you're just looking to squeeze every ounce of FPS out of the game possible, navigate up to the quick preset in the top. We want to set this down to the lowest option available. Once again, we can then go ahead and press escape and go back inside of the game. See how your brand new settings are holding up. If you do wish to increase some of the settings to fine tune the visual experience, or if you want to degrade some of the settings, if you're looking for further FPS gains, feel free to do so. For those of you running on an AMD Radeon based graphics card, it's recommended to actually navigate down and use the dynamic fidelity FX CAS option and turn this to on. With inside of the target frames per second setting, simply set the minimum desired level of FPS you wish to achieve from the game. Minimum resolution, I'd recommend setting this to about 75% or no lower. The lower this is going to be, the worse your game can look in demanding scenes. And our maximum resolution is going to be set to 100. Once that's been set, we can then go ahead and simply press escape. And whenever our game goes to drop below 60 FPS in more demanding areas, the game will dynamically lower its render resolution to compensate for that extra draw, hopefully stabilizing your FPS. That now leads us on to a few last options for those of you that are still struggling to play the game on lower end or outdated hardware. Your first option is simply going to be waiting for community custom graphics mods to release for the game on sites such as Nexus Mods and other modding websites. There'll be a list of modding websites in which I'd recommend checking out in the description down below. And with the days and weeks coming up ahead past the release of Cyberpunk, we should be seeing more and more mods becoming available for graphics settings and being able to customize the game's access to resources on your PC. My only other recommendation would be to check out streaming services such as GeForce Now or Google Stadia. As most of you have probably seen by now, the Xbox One and PlayStation 4 releases of the game are absolutely terrible and it's almost not worthwhile buying the game on those platforms whatsoever. So if you're unable to get one of the brand new Xboxes, PS5, or struggling to get hold of any PC hardware for a reasonable price to actually play the game, if you have bought the game on Steam, you can access it through GeForce Now. This will simply hook into your Steam library and stream the game from the cloud where all of the heavy rendering will be done and streamed to your device. On screen now you can see my gaming laptop playing the game natively versus streaming it via GeForce Now. As you can see the experience is completely night and day. With the GeForce Now version, I'm also able to stream the game up to 1080p with RTX turned on, with no high-end hardware required whatsoever, with the ability to play on your laptop, phone, or any other devices that are connected to the internet. Now that you've followed all of the optimizations and settings for our game, we've successfully set everything up. The only other optimization I'd recommend setting would be to actually set a manual FPS cap for your lowest desired FPS. Whatever the most common lowest FPS value you're currently hitting now that the game is fully optimized is what you should set an FPS cap too. So if you're driving around Night City and playing the game and you're often playing at 50 FPS, it would be recommended to set your FPS cap slightly below that to around about 45 or 50 exactly. This will benefit you in stabilizing your frame pacing and frame timing, resulting in a much snappier, more fluid feeling game. A lot of people on PCs often wonder why console games feel so consistent sometimes and feel a lot snappier at lower frame rates. This is why. This comes down to frame pacing. As you can see here on the right hand side, this is me playing the game completely uncapped. I'm getting a lower frame time, but my frame 
frame pacing is all over the place. If I set an FPS cap just like so here, as you can see my frame graph is now completely smooth with a few minor exceptions. If you're going to cap your FPS and you're on an Nvidia graphics card, open back up inside of the Nvidia control panel, navigate over to manage 3D settings. With inside of here we can go over to program settings on the right hand side, navigate over to the right hand side to add. You should then be able to see Cyberpunk 2077 with inside of here, highlight the program, select add. With inside of here we're going to proceed to scroll down to the maximum frame rate limit option. With inside of here we're going to go to the right hand side, go to use global settings, turn this on. Once again we're then going to cap the FPS to our average lowest FPS which we commonly see. For me that's going to be 90, press ok. It's also recommended if you are using an FPS cap to navigate down to the low latency mode, go to the drop down menu and set this to ultra. To cap your FPS on an AMD Radeon graphics card simply navigate over to your desktop, right click, open up inside of the Radeon software panel. Once inside of here navigate up to the top to the gaming tab, then simply navigate down to Cyberpunk 2077. With inside of here we're going to proceed to scroll down to the Radeon chill option and turn this on. What we can then go ahead and do is we can set a minimum and maximum FPS cap. For the most part I'd recommend matching these two values. So for me once again I'm going to be capping my FPS to 90. Once the values have been put inside of the Radeon graphics driver we can then simply go ahead and minimize out. And there you guys have it. That is the ultimate FPS increase guide for Cyberpunk 2077. If you guys have enjoyed this video and are happy with your results please do remember to leave a like on the video as it does help me out tremendously and if you guys do enjoy this sort of content please do consider pressing that subscription button alongside the bell notification and you'll be notified instantly whenever new content goes live on the channel. Thank you ever so much for taking the time to watch this video. I'm Pangino and I'll see you in the next one.